Not unlike the metabolic health of bison foraging on phytochemically rich diets, the low incidence of cardiovascular disease and obesity and Maasai people who live in Kenya and in northern Tanzania can be attributed in part to their high levels of physical activity and to the phytochemical diversity of their diets. They add up to 28 herbs to meat-based soups and 12 herbs to milk. Diets of hunter-gatherers are also much less energy-dense and richer in fiber, micronutrients, and phytochemicals than ultra-processed Western diets. Hunter-gatherers like the Maasai are noteworthy for their metabolic health. They have less heart disease, cancer, diabetes, and osteoporosis than people who eat diets high in ultra-processed foods, and that's not because hunter-gatherers die before developing these diseases. Historically, Native Americans used wild berries for food and medicine. Dried meat and fat were combined with berries to make pemmican, thus enabling use of dried berries during fall and winter. The rich arrays of phytochemicals that berries contain protect against metabolic syndrome, type 2 diabetes, cardiovascular disease, and cancer. Phytochemicals can counter all the hallmarks of cancer that occur during the multi-step development of tumor cells. Those hallmarks include sustaining proliferative signaling, evading growth suppressors, resisting cell death, enabling replicative immortality, inducing angiogenesis, and activating invasion and metastasis. Unlike in the United States, eating traditionally processed red meat is not associated with increased risk of colon cancer in Morocco, likely due to the differences in how red meat is processed in the two countries. Kadid is ribs of beef, lamb, or camel cut into thin slices mixed with olive oil, herbs, and spices such as cumin, garlic, coriander, salt, and vinegar. Compounds in herbs and spices counter adverse effects of heterocyclic amines and polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons, and Moroccans don't use sodium nitrate as a preservative. Culture links livestock with landscapes. During the second summer I worked for rancher Henry DeLuca, I was pondering two seemingly conflicting observations. I'd just taken a course in genetics and learned about the value of crossbreeding and heterosis, a propensity of a crossbred animal to show superior qualities to those of its parents. I knew, though, Henry kept his own replacement heifers to maintain his herd, so I asked him why he didn't buy replacements of different breeds from other ranchers. He began by telling me a story about the time he bought replacement heifers and put them on the Mount Shavanaugh grazing allotment. He had a devil of a time finding them on the mountain during the summer. They were in poor condition when he brought them back to the ranch in the fall, and they weren't pregnant. He then told me about the time he had to move his cattle herd to South Park for, quote, the summer from hell. He had a hard time finding his cattle because they were constantly moving, they came off the range in poor condition, and they had low reproductive performance. He concluded by saying, quote, the problem is the cows just don't know the range, end quote. 